Well, we've done it. We've tipped our viewer balance in favor of subscribers over non-subscribers. But 43% of people who watch the series still aren't subscribed to the channel. If you're enjoying the series, it would mean a lot if you could double check just to make sure you've clicked that subscribe button as it really does help out the channel a lot. And we're getting closer to our 70k goal. Thanks guys, enjoy the video. We've made it to the second last match of the losers bracket in the Johto True Power Tournament. Last time we saw a fierce battle between Gym Leader Claire and Gym Leader Whitney that was truly an offense versus defense battle of epic proportions and came right down to the wire with an insane ending. Today we'll be witnessing a battle between the highest ranked Gym Leader in Johto, Claire, and an Elite Four member of the Indigo Plateau, Karen. Claire returns with her predominantly dragon type team and in this match against Karen she's gonna have to make use of her mixed offenses and strike at the right time using her non-dragon Pokemon where she can. Karen on the other hand will have to play her defenses right while picking out times to strike with Pokemon like Weavile and Houndoom. Both trainers are ready to battle so let's head down to the arena for what is bound to be an exciting match. Here we go, what an absolute powerhouse battle we have today as we've got Karen of the Elite Four versus Claire of Blackthorn City. Karen starting off very strong with the Weavile, perhaps realizing that that Weavile is very strong against almost Claire's entire team, with perhaps one exception being the Kingdra, which she did send out. Kingdra, a very good choice for Claire that is her signature Pokemon, quite bulky but quite powerful too. So Karen is going to be forced to switch out early on and going into the Vileplume. Now Vileplume is something that you would imagine would be able to tank a Kingdra's moves pretty easily. Here comes the Hydro Pump, and yes, Vileplume absolutely eating that up. Even despite how powerful Kingdra can be, Vileplume getting some recovery as well. Kingdra is going to go for the Ice Beam now though. Oh, perhaps not anticipating that the Kingdra had Ice Beam. That is going to be super effective and doing a whopping amount of damage on that Vileplume. But Vileplume going for the Sleep Powder here. So all of a sudden the Kingdra will be put to sleep. And now this is a little bit dangerous because of course Claire at this point wouldn't really want to switch it out because then she'd have to send it in back in again later as pretty much death fodder if it still remains asleep. So now, all of a sudden, the Vileplume can go for the Giga Drain. That's going to do a little bit of damage and get some recovery back too. Won't be super effective, of course, because of Kingdra's Dragon typing, but still doing a decent amount of damage there as Kingdra gets some recovery. And it looks like the Vileplume will get some recovery back from its Black Sludge as well. So here, it all depends how long this Kingdra stays asleep for it. It will stay asleep on this turn, actually. So now the Vileplume will be able to get off one more Giga Drain and increase its health even more in addition to the Black Sludge. Kingdra luckily does have its leftovers though, so it should survive one more if it does stay asleep. But either way, this Vileplume is really getting some health back, that is for sure. Let's see what happens on this turn. The Kingdra does wake up and goes for the Ice Beam, although at this point it doesn't look like it will be enough to take down that Vileplume. No! Vileplume surviving it, going for another Giga Drain. Will that be enough on the Kingdra? No! The Kingdra surviving thanks to his leftovers, and Vileplume will now be a little bit above half health, whereas Kingdra is going to be just in the yellow here. Now, it would be dangerous for Claire to switch out here because the Vileplume could go for Sleep Powder again, of course. Or perhaps even Sludge Bomb if Karen makes a prediction. Claire knows that Karen is a smart trainer, that is for sure. Another Ice Beam. No! The Vileplume surviving just barely. Able to go for the Giga Drain and that will take down the Kingdra. So we had a very bulky, bulky battle. Both Pokemon kind of fulfill a similar role, in fact. Both have very, very good special attack, but also very good bulk. So Karen and Claire are trying to exchange blows here, and now the Charizard. Claire realizing she can pick up some momentum here with the Charizard going up against the Vileplume, and here comes the Air Slash. Now Karen doesn't really have anything to switch into that, so she will let the Vileplume go down. Vileplume pulling off a good, good move there in the beginning, because Kingdra is, of course, one of Claire's key Pokemon in this battle, and now Karen sending out the Honchkrow. The Honchkrow is a very dangerous threat. For most Pokemon, really, Charizard's gonna go straight for the Flamethrower, though. Claire deciding not to switch, perhaps a smart choice, and doing a whopping amount of damage on the Honchkrow and the Burn! Oh no, that is a key, key burn right there, because Honchkrow, its attack will now be lower, does get the Night Slash off, will be a critical hit every single time it moves with the setup that Karen has on it. But of course, Honchkrow getting burned is not a good thing at all. Going for the Sucker Punch. Oh, but it failed. Oh, Claire predicting the Sucker Punch. Realizing that Honchkrow would want to outspeed the Charizard on this turn. Knowing she'd go for Sucker Punch on it. And now the Honchkrow will go down to the burn. While all Charizard got is recovery from Roost. So Claire getting a little lucky, of course, with that burn. But capitalizing on it immediately. And in comes the Gengar now. Gengar going for the Shadow Ball. This will be interesting if this does KO. It's going to be close. Let's see. 
No, the Charizard does survive, gets the special defense drop, doesn't really matter at that margin. And of course, Gengar getting hurt by that life orb, so a slight miscalculation on that Shadow Ball. Here comes the Flamethrower. Oh, and it does take down the Gengar. The problem there being Charizard's Blaze ability did activate, so it powered up the uh, attack of its Fire-type moves. And now Houndoom coming out on the field, a great counter for Charizard. Uh, Claire is not going to want to switch anything into this because, of course, the Houndoominite will activate and Mega Houndoom will make its way onto the field. This thing will outspeed everything on Claire's team. That's the problem with it. A very dangerous Pokemon and Charizard putting in some good work, but it will go down. Ultimately outmatched by that Mega Houndoom and now Garchomp coming on the field. That is a big threat for Houndoom. Houndoom could outspeed it but it likely won't KO, so Karen is going to be forced to switch here into the Umbreon. Umbreon, a very, very physically defensive Pokemon. We know that all too well, but the Garchomp going for a Swords Dance here. Now, the problem here is that Swords Dance, yes, it does raise Garchomp's attack, but Umbreon does have the Foul Play move, which raises its attack depending on how much attack the opponent has, so this is going to be dangerous. Umbreon does survive the Earthquake here, but now going for the Foul Play, here it comes. Should do a huge amount of damage on the Garchomp, but the Garchomp does have the Focus Sash, it seems. So perhaps Claire realizing it was worth the risk there, given that she had the Focus Sash. And now all of a sudden the Umbreon will be outsped, but it is going to go for Protect. So perhaps Karen trying to get a little bit more recovery on that Umbreon. Maybe hoping it might survive, but I don't know. That, oh man, that Garchomp is powerful, especially after a Swords Dance with the Stab 100 Base Power Earthquake. Umbreon getting a little bit of recovery above half now. But here we go. Uh oh it's going for Protect again, and it actually lands! The Double Protect lands! Karen, making sure to just try and get as much health back as possible in the odd chance that the Umbreon does survive. It is going to get some recovery. I don't know if that's going to be enough. It's going to be close, though. Let's find out. Garchomp, there's no room for a Triple Protect here. Earthquake on the Umbreon after Swords Dance. And it will take the Umbreon down. Umbreon has been an absolute threat for almost every other trainer, but Claire managing it really, really well here, forcing it into a corner. And now the Mega Houndoom will come back out on the field. It will outspeed the Garchomp, of course, taking it down with the Dark Pulse. Garchomp going down. Man, oh man, Mega Houndoom's speed is something else entirely, that is for sure. But here comes the Gyarados. Gyarados is a big, big threat for Houndoom, that is for sure. And Karen, of course, can't switch out here is the problem. She only has her Houndoom and Weavile left. Houndoom going for Dark Pulse, just trying to get some damage off. Let's see how much this does. Ooh, oh, it did flinch the Gyarados, though. The Gyarados is flinched, so now the Houndoom will get two attacks off. I don't think it'll take down the Gyarados, though. No, very close. But here comes the Waterfall. That will definitely take down the Houndoom. Make a Houndoom putting in some good work, but getting thwarted by this Gyarados here. That was a close one, though, with that flinch. Very lucky there on that flinch. And now the Weavile coming in. Weavile will definitely outspeed the Gyarados, that is for sure. Here comes the Ice Shard, Priority Ice Shard. Karen just making sure to take that thing down. Claire, of course, has nothing to switch in. Would make no sense for her to switch there. But now, the Salamence coming out on the field. Now, Salamence does have Intimidate. That is the key here. It looks like the Weavile is in an advantageous position because, of course, Claire has two Pokemon weak to uh, Ice. Actually, four times weak to Ice. But here comes the Icicle Crash after Intimidate and the Yachi Berry, it looks like. I don't think that'll KO the Salamence. It might be a little bit close. No, it does not take out the Salamence. Salamence now free to go for an attack. Let's see. No, it flipped! Oh, this is impossible! Weavile, Ice Shard on the Salamence! That will take it down, I think. Yes, the Salamence going down. Another flinch from Karen. Karen getting some luck towards the end of this battle, perhaps making up for that burn earlier on. Oh, man. Now, all of a sudden, we have Dragonite versus Weavile. The problem here being Dragonite does have the extreme speed doing about half on the Weavile. Weavile going for it. Oh, no, it missed! The Icicle Crash missed! Is this even real? Dragonite! Extreme speed on the Weavile! No! The Weavile survives on like 1 HP! Now the Dragonite does have the Yachi Berry though! That might be enough to allow it to survive including its multi-scale ability. Of course, yes, it will tank that actually pretty well. And now the Dragonite has free reign to be able to go for the Extreme Speed and take down the Weavile. That miss! Maybe costed Karen the match at the end. She did have some good luck with those flinches, of course. But man, oh man, what an ending that was. That was insane. 
came within one miss, of course, did Karen. That was a close battle, perhaps closer than it looked on the surface. Man, oh man, these two trainers going absolutely ballistic here. And Claire will be moving to the final of the loser's bracket. Before we go, I'd like to thank the patrons who are making this tournament possible. If you guys want to help further this series' potential and support it, the link to my Patreon page will be in the description below. That's all for this one. This has been Soul Spectre, and I'll see you guys next time for more True Power.